Dr. Emoto conducted another groundbreaking experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month he said thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Southeast Asia. The year is 1956. The place is a secret military laboratory for developing and producing weapons of mass destruction. Work has been underway here for several years on a powerful new generation of bacteriological weapon. The scientists are discussing what properties this weapon should have at one of their protracted secret meetings. Suddenly, the session breaks off. All of the participants are taken to the hospital with symptoms of severe food poisoning. An investigation into what happened quickly hits a dead end. The scientists had consumed nothing except water from the carafes on their table. The water was tested. No harmful additives were found. Its chemical composition was H2O. And that's what the report said. Poisoning caused by ordinary water. Twenty years later, a fantastic hypothesis was put forward. A hypothesis that could explain water's unpredictable behavior. Water has memory. Experiments done in many countries around the world have shown that water receives and makes an imprint of any outside influence, remembering everything that occurs in the space that surrounds it. I hope to show people through my research that water has a memory of its own. Dr. Emoto's laboratory does research on water samples, which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. With modern technology, it is possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used. Using structurized water makes vegetables ripen faster and increases the amount of useful microelements and vegetable proteins several fold. If we look at the shoots, the treated ones were long, even, and strong, while the untreated ones were short, thin, and weak. If we look at the plants today, those from the selected seeds have all ripened, but the ones from non-selected seeds have not. We have to say that using structurized water really does affect the growth of vegetables and fruits. For the purposes of irrigation, 20% less of this type of water is needed than when using ordinary water. No fertilizer was added to the soil or the water. The chemical composition remained the same, H2O. The only thing that had changed was its structure. At the present time, scientists can answer the question of how this happens, but science does not yet have an answer to the question of why. Depending on age, a human being is made up of 70 to 90 percent water. An adult drinks approximately 2.5 liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another 1.5 liters is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Water makes a long and difficult journey before arriving in our homes.
It used to be common knowledge that a settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of miles using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water supply system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. <laughs> 